Uh, my name is Robert Tegg, I'm uh, from Southampton and I've got a BMW 840 CSI Individual. Um, it's in Romantic Red, uh, one of 33 that were produced in that colour and it took me quite a while to actually get the right car. Um, like most owners, they tend to search for what they're, what they're looking for. This is my second one actually. Um, I fell in love 1990, I went to the 1990 motor show and absolutely just fell in love with it. Um, the classic lines of the car, um, the pillarless factor of it, I mean obviously it should have been a convertible at some point but uh, they didn't go that far. Um, and I just absolutely fell in love with it as a, as, as a youngster, uh, even before I had my driving licence. Well, it never never fails to put a smile on my face. That's the first thing. Um, I, I've had a, a couple of modifications done to it, but it, 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 even a standard trim, um, you know, the V8 rumble, the the, the noise that it makes. Um, but it's just a classic cruiser. Um, it's certainly not sort of a point-to-point -point car. I have taken it on a track, but it's not that kind of vehicle. Um, it's designed to be grand touring across across the continent really across Germany in particular it's as close as you can possibly get to an AC Snitzer from the factory um, my intention when I bought it uh, it had the standard and it's still I still got the throwing star um, alloys um, but I then did a lot of research into if if I'd gone into the showroom in 1997 and said look I want a, this is what I want and I want an AC Snitzer version what, what modifications do I need to do to get it to that spec? Uh, so I've even got the side stripes, but I just haven't fitted them. Um, so it's got genuine staggered 19 inch, I mean not 18 inch, 19 inch um, staggered uh, AC Snitzer wheels, uh, type twos. Um, it's got the Blystein uh, B12 um, uh, uh, suspension system on it. Um, so yeah, I've done everything you can possibly do to it to get it to AC Snitzer spec. For the last five years, it has been a daily driver. It was never intended to be a daily driver, um, but um, uh, I, I sold my, um, I had a Range Rover as my daily, sold that, um, ran this car, I've been running this car as a daily, probably about just over four years actually, um, and I've recently bought another daily driver, so this one's gonna start getting pampered a bit more. Um, it, it needs quite a bit doing to it because uh, it's been out in the, in the cold, it's been out in the, in the weather, um, and needs a little bit of TLC now, um, which I intend to do. Uh, my name's uh, Graham Harms, and uh, it's a BMW 850 1991. Uh, I bought it in 1998, so I've had it 23 years now. It, it was just one of those sort of childhood gr dreams, really, that when, the, um, when, when that particular, I always loved cars, and when that particular car came out, uh, I think it was probably every, every person's dream. Um, it was, it was of a level that I never thought uh, that I would ever be able to have one. Um, and it was just by chance, uh, I was in the, in the process of changing cars and uh, a friend of mine happened to give, send me a list of cars that had become available and that was on there and uh, that, that was it really from, uh, from, from being able to um, have the opportunity to get one and being able, you know, at the right time. Over the years I've had a little bit of a love-hate relationship and I say that in the nicest way because uh, I originally bought it, as much as I loved it, but I originally bought it to use it every single day. Um, shortly after buying it, fuel prices went through the roof, um, it became quite expensive to run, so I tended to, I bought another car, and that then stayed in the garage, and I used to use it just occasionally. As the years went by, I kept thinking, really I ought to move on, and uh, I've always loved American cars, Corvettes and that sort of thing. Um, and as the years went by, I, every time I came to think about selling it, I'd look, I'd look at it and i think, just can't let it go. Um, and then that, that cycle would happen three, four times over, over sort of a 10 year period. I've now reached the stage where I, I love the car. Um, I've put all sorts of um, American cars out of my uh, head and I just thoroughly enjoy owning it, looking at it. And today was, um, as, as I said to you when we first arrived, it was, um, because I use it fairly infrequently, 
Um, it's, uh, I, I, I was surprised at how it turns the head still. Um, and that was a big plus coming up here today. Really did enjoy it. I've been a member of the car club as long as I've owned, owned the vehicle. Um, there, there's um, obviously one gets discounts and so on on, on various products and um, services and so on. Um, I just think it's uh, it, it's the camaraderie and um, the ability to to contact people that are of a like mind if you have problems and you need to, to discuss things. So um, and we get a great magazine every month. So yeah, it's really good. John, this is a 1995 uh, 850 uh, CSI. Um, owned it for a month, so very new. Learning lots already, uh, with lots more to learn. I've not owned an 8 Series before, um, but opportunity came up to uh, to acquire this, and uh, and uh, um, it needs some love. But it's epic. You know, I'm a kid of the 80s, and this is an 80s design, albeit it was re released in the in the 90s. Um, I'm a bit of a sucker for for flip up headlights. Um, in the past I've had a Mark 1 MX-5, um, which is the same, and I really miss that. I, I'd written the idea of getting a CSI out, out of frame, really, um, and was, was, uh, was speaking to one guy in particular about an, an 840 individual that, uh, that was beautiful. Um, and uh, it was only lockdown that had prevented us from doing that deal. Uh, and then I got a call about this being for sale and whizzed over, looked at it and bought it. I mean, you wouldn't have one of these as your, as your only car, right? So. Um, uh, you know, I've got the facility at home to work on it, and uh, um, you know that takes as long as it takes. And I've got other uh, other cars I can drive, but no, this is it's beautiful, right? It's um, it's uh, it's quite unique, I think. It looks a very big car, but by today's standards, it's not. Um, so I've got a, a a modern six series at home, which which is much bigger. Um, this is a, a manual, uh, and it's 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 quite raw. It can be quite jerky, you know, but. Uh, um, uh, anything other than just kind of motorway driving, if you're in the back roads, being a manual, it's great. And, and, and the V12 and the torque, uh, right from low down in the rev range all the way around to the red, it's, um, it just pulls. Um, it's, uh, it's great, yeah, very connected. So there are some, ch some changes I want to make to, to either A, get it running brilliantly, or, and um, uh, enhancing it, right? So the wheels is an enhancement. Uh, I want to do something with the exhaust. When you're outside the car, it sounds great but you can't hear it inside the car at all, which I think when you know, as it was designed as a Grand Tourer, I understand that, but we don't use them as that anymore. And if I'm, uh, if I'm paying to run a V12, I want to be able to hear the pound notes burn. My name's Phil Starr. Um, this is my 840 CI 1994. I had it since around 2012. Bought it as a, a rolling restoration, let's say. Knowing, knowing it needed a few bits and pieces and being able to tinker with it's been sort of my hobby. It had oil leaks, um, had water leaks, and I've just basically gone through things, fixed them as I go, and uh, then when a little bit of money's come along, changed and fixed the bits that I felt are going to be expensive if they go wrong, like the suspension, and um, I needed the two front seats re-leathering, and uh, yeah, just working my way through a rolling restoration really whilst enjoying it 
how it shows and just the, the beauty of driving it. It was affordable when I bought it um, and that was one of the draws to it, something that's a little iconic but affordable at the time. It wasn't till I owned it that I realised that it was affordable because they cost quite a lot to, to keep going unless you are able to tinker, tinker yourself. I've, I've had the suspension change to the Elbeck springs and Bilstein uh, shocks. Um, it's got uh, Zito Deep Star alloys staggered on it just for a change. I've kept the throwing stars. Uh, it's got bump steer plates and camber plates and uh, I've just had stainless exhaust put on just for the, the sound of a V8 really. It's ever so quiet otherwise. Um, other than that, I've tried to keep more or less everything standard or at least that it can be changed back. So since last time I've actually fully resprayed the whole car um, and um, done quite a bit of upgrade in terms of suspensions, arms, bushes, um, you know, uh, there's quite a few bit of stuff left in terms of inter uh, interiors. So I'm going to get the headliners done, um, just uh, sort out their seats and door cards and so forth. But apart from that, I'm actually quite happy with how much work I've done on the car. So she's more or less complete in, apart from the interior. So you know, I've spent quite a bit in terms of just the engine rebuild, suspension, um, gearbox rebuild, a new clutch, everything. So. It's been a long journey, but I'm quite happy, satisfied from the last meet we did uh, into 2020. I've got about f four 8 Series. Um, I've got, a, well, actually five 8 Series, but one of them is a donor, which I've kind of kept if I need parts to fix it. You know, it's pretty hard to get hold of parts for these cars. So I've just bought one just for donor purpose. So I've got four 8 Series. I've got a 650, um, you know, then I've got E24 6 Series as well. Uh, E39 Alpina. Uh, E46 M3, uh, I've, I've all the collection, I do have an odd one which is Audi TT 240 uh, Quattro, uh, 240 BHP Quattro, um, but yeah, this, then I have the E330 Ci as well, which I've never actually, even, since I bought it, I've never even driven it. So I do have quite a few variants, it's just that out of all of them, this always, it always pulls me towards the 8, it's just the shape, the shape, you know, you can't go wrong with the lines, the pop-up headlights, you know, I know they don't make them anymore because of the hits. Uh, safety reasons but this is what makes this flagship car such a unique car and it always drags me and hence the reason I've got four of them you know so that's why I'm going to be a full out and doing trying to do a conversion on my one of my 840s which I'm going to be doing the S62 conversion 6 speed uh, M5 engine conversion so hopefully that'll be the next one to see on the next shows. At the moment, 8 Series community isn't as huge, um, but it is slowly going out there. The, you know, there are you every other day you are seeing people buying. It. There's more on the roads. I've seen for the last two years. There's been quite a lot more activity in terms of the 8 Series itself. Um, there are more on the roads. Um, it's not as big as other owners, uh, other cars such as you know your E30s and E24s, E28s, but it's slowly creeping up itself. Um, there will be hopefully next year, there will be quite more people doing events as well for the A-Series and there will be more, you'll see quite a few more as well. Mm -hmm.